welcome to the program. This is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Today was the last day of the Euronest Parliamentary Assembly held this year in Kyiv. The Interparliamentary Forum brings together representatives from Ukraine, Moldova, Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia to meet with the 28 members of the European Parliament to talk with us today about this event as well as the implications for the Eastern Partnership meeting is Bogdan Ferens, the Secretariat of the Parliamentary Assembly of Euronest. Bogdan, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. So first of all, tell us about this event going that happened today here in the Verkhovna Rada. Yeah, the Verkhovna Rada was the place uh, that bring together the MPs uh, from different countries that you mentioned, Georgia, Armenia, Moldova, Azerbaijan. But uh, uh, the maps uh, were from European Parliament too. And right. it was really very important to have this, you know, platform for discussions and for improving, uh, approving some decisions. And so what was on the agenda this year? The agenda was uh, focused on the four main topics. The one topic uh, was on the uh, labor rights and women's uh, uh -huh. possibilities. So, I think it's very important how women can uh, uh, be present on the labor market. The uh -huh. second uh, point was on the youth unemployment, how the Eastern Partnership countries and EU member states can tackle this problem, especially in the context of economic crisis. Also, uh, the discussions and report was on the freedom of media. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Euronest Parliamentary Assembly has uh, approved uh, three urgent resolutions. One of the resolutions was on the human rights and, uh, and another resolution uh, were focused on uh, other very important topics in the context of, of uh, Ukraine and Eastern Partnership. And so, uh, of the five ones, which were the most pressing this year? We have, uh, for example, with freedom of uh, speech, media, media, yeah. freedom of media. And so, what what came out of that? Uh, those meetings on that. You know, uh, the added value I think uh, is not only these documents. Mm -hmm. The added value is the possibility to speak with our partners, with our colleagues to have uh, uh, common positions on different topics because Eastern partnership is not so uh, easy way to forming the, the one point on agenda. We mm -hmm. know that, for example, uh, between the Azerbaijan and Armenia, uh, there is a conflict, you know, Absolutely. and sometimes it's quite difficult to find the common solution. Yes. Georgia has problems with the uh, uh, occupied territories yes. as we have. Right. Uh, that's why uh, we are trying and different delegations are trying to find this common position on different topics and uh, to have this practical input after the finishing the parliamentary assembly. How members of the parliament on the national levels uh, could improve the situation with, with these topics that I mentioned. Right, and so what were the outcomes then? Let's talk about the first one that had to do with uh, labor rights and especially the place of women. So what were the discussions on this topic? It was quite interesting uh, topic and discussion, especially in the context on Ukraine, because our delegation uh, was preparing the amendments to the main report. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, women uh, who are working in the EU member states. We know right. Right. the migration and it's a really big complex of issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, from our point of view, from our national interests, we would like that our women migrants uh, would have the, the protection, the security protection in member states. That's why we are trying to put this issue on the table. Of course, a different uh, fraction from the European Parliament had different opinions on this well, because yes. the migration is one of the main topic yes. uh, in the agenda of the European Union. But uh, we were successful uh, on this uh, advocating and uh, the, our amendments from our delegations have been approved and we are happy on this because we need uh, to advocate our, our uh, position uh, in the European institution. And what about with uh, the freedom of media? So, and this is a, an issue that's coming to the head in Ukraine with some complaints about the protection of media and journalists as well. Yeah, I think uh, it's very important uh, in uh, EU in the European Union, uh, the situation with the freedom of media 
is much better, I think, in the, as in the partner, uh, Eastern Partnership countries. Mm -hmm. As uh, in the context of Ukraine, we know, I think, the situation, I'm happy that uh, your chan this channel is, is, is a new breeze, I think, is a media uh, our uh, me media atmosphere, because our main channel is under the control of oligarchs, and it's not good, you know. Yeah. We should change the situation. In some uh, partners' countries, from the Eastern Partnership, some medias are not allowed uh, to be open, you know, to, right. to be more democratic. To show anything uh, of... Uh, to the, show, the, because the, it depends on the internal political situation, right. you know. So they may be prevented from showing things about the opposition yeah, or anything that's not from... From you know. Right, right. And so what, what were some of the resolutions or things made there that, uh, regarding this issue? I mean, it must have been very hard to come to some um, type of realistic... Uh, understandings between countries that have different levels of freedom of, of media. Yeah, that's why it was important to find some common solutions uh, in the uh, implementing some common approaches. Mm -hmm. What can be done, especially in, in the context of democratization of media, of uh, making some, uh, uh, how to say, reforming to the more independence uh, possibilities for the media. And of course, I think this, the discussion was also on the cyber security. Right. You know, this topic is very important Absolutely. and uh, very sens sensitive and for, good for, for different yes. countries. Yes. And so, uh, what are the out? What were the main outcomes that you saw here? You know, I think the main outcome uh, is the possibility, physically. Mm -hmm to uh, meet with each other for members of the parliament, of uh, the national parliaments from different EU uh, member states and from the Eastern Partnership countries. Sometimes for people it's quite difficult to understand what's going on. These people are sitting discussing some resolutions and what, what was the, or what could right. be the practical results. But I as a diplomat, as a person who are responsible for the international relationships, I think that the main uh, impact is the personal context, Absolutely. Uh, finding some common solutions, uh, uh, feeling some solidarity, for example, when a Ukraine or Ukrainian delegation is proposing some urgent resolution on the uh, concrete topics on our security and our uh, topic on human rights, mm -hmm. when we feel this solidarity from other national delegations, it's a diplomacy. It's right, a possibility absolutely. to advocate our interests. Absolutely. And so the the documents that come out of these, of course, these are non-binding. These are uh, simply ag agreements showing uh, a common common agreement. You know? Yeah. And where does the where do you go from now? What happens next with Euronest, or are the documents used and presented at some other time? Mm -hmm. These documents, these resolutions, will be. Uh, sent to the uh, summit of uh, the Eastern Partnership mm -hmm. that uh, will take place on the 25th of November in Brussels. In Brussels and uh -huh. uh, it will, we, I hope personally that uh, during this summit it, it will be possible to download the Eastern Partnership because uh, this framework uh, is needed on this uh, downloading, you know, in more practical and more tangible results. And what are you uh, seeing that may come up here at the next Eastern Partnership meeting? What are there some of the things that are going to be on the agenda and some of the things you're hoping that Ukraine will be able to push to the forefront? Uh, you know, Eastern Partnership, it's an added platform, I think, mm -hmm. because for us, for Ukraine, the main priority is bilateral cooperation with the uh, uh, European uh, Union. Right. That's why we should, as a country, we should use this opportunity uh, to uh, show the position that we are a European country, we would like to deepen our integration process. Uh, of course, we should uh, we should present our real reforms, not like right. just uh, things that talking. are yeah, or just or real right, reforms. Exactly. And for our uh, partners in Georgia, in Azerbaijan, in Armenia, in Moldova, we have a very good relationships, and right. it's very important on the interparliamentary level to maintain these relationships and to continue to work together on some concrete topics. And what frustrations have come up that you see that may develop as issues further or need to be ad uh, addressed in the near future? Uh, you know, um, the problem of this framework of the Uranus, for example, is, uh, could be on the uh, 
different positions, as I mentioned, right. different position on the national level. It's hardly difficult to find the common position between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Absolutely. We know yes. they have a conflict. And uh, we as Ukraine as, and our uh, members of the parliament, they are trying to to be as, in, you know, the, 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 how to say, the... Bridging, the bridging, bridge yes, to be the bridge, uh, yeah. To be the bridge between these delegations to find some common approaches. Right. And if we will reach this, it's a success, you know, from maybe small steps, it could be possible. Some smaller. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to achieve a big results, why not? So the biggest outcome you're seeing here is that communication, the diplomacy, the, uh, the this that grows from these type of meetings that hopefully will lead to uh, real changes or some improvements in all of the countries that are participating. Yeah, and physical presence of the members of the parliament is very important yes. because it's not only enough to sit in Brussels or in Strasbourg and to discuss Ukraine or other countries. Mm -hmm. It's important to be here, to feel the atmosphere, to talk with people, you know, to have some uh, meetings with the NGO representatives. Mm -hmm. And after that, I hope that these members of the European Parliament will come back and will uh, be more interesting in advocating Ukrainian um, interests, I think. I hope. So we had here then not just uh, politicians and heads of state that were present, but also, as you said, you mentioned NGOs and other organizations that yeah. represented civil society. Yeah. By the way, interesting thing, in the framework of Euronest Assembly, uh, one working group is uh, organized and was organized on Belarus. Mm -hmm. Because well, they uh, didn't participate. Yeah, they yeah. didn't participate on the position of the European Union towards the uh, internal political situation of uh, Belarus, but the, the places are reserved for the mm -hmm. Belarusian delegations, 10 uh, places. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the future when the uh, internal situation will be more better, I mean in democratic uh, context, mm -hmm. Belarus will join to Euronest. Why not? It will be a good opportunity for all of us, I think. Thank you so much for being with us today, Bogdan. Thank you so much for the invitation and for this interview. Today we were joined by Bogdan Ferens, the Secretariat of the Parliamentary Assembly Euronest. This has been Vivica Williams with Head to Head. Thank you for watching.